Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastitutes.com. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to create this post-it note and push pin completely from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. I will be working in CS5 but we won't be using any of the new advanced features of CS5 so if you're using CS4 or 3 or earlier you should be able to follow along just fine. We are going to use various tools and colour gradients to achieve the result you can see right here. In this tutorial, there is an image and a font that has been sourced off the internet, royalty free, so be sure to check out the links in the description, and you can download this work file for free also in the description. So let's get started. First, I'm going to come to File, New, and I'm going to create a new canvas, and I'm going to make this 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters and I'm going to make it 150 dots per inch. Now before I start drawing my object I'm quickly going to drag in my color palette which I've previously constructed for the sake of this tutorial. Okay so I'm going to create a new layer by pressing command shift n shortcut key I can create a new layer and I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and come to my canvas and by pressing and holding shift I can click and drag and I can create myself a scaled selection a nice square there so I'm going to get myself a square that I'm happy with and once I'm happy with that I'm going to come to my color picker tool I'm just going to select one of my predefined colors here and by pressing G I can pull up my paint bucket tool which is the paint bucket tool of the menu and I'm going to fill that by pressing command D I'm going to deselect that and by pressing V I can bring up my selection tool and once I'm happy with my square I'm going to press command T to bring up my free transform I'm just going to rotate that a little just to get something I'm happy with and press enter and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the corner effect. So if I come to my lasso tool, or I could press L for shortcut, I'm going to click and select an area of the paper there. And by pressing Command X, that's going to cut that area. And if I press Command V, I'll paste that area back in place. But if we press V, we can get our selection tool and as you can see that has been pasted but I couldn't see it because it was the same color. Now what I'm going to do is come over to my layers I'm going to double click on that layer and I'm going to select color overlay and I'm going to come to my color picker I'm going to click it once and I'm just going to move move off the color area and it'll turn into the color picker tool and I'm going to select the next color that I predefined earlier. OK, click OK again and I'm going to move this back into place. But this time, I'm going to come to Edit. I'm going to come down to Transform. And I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. And as you can see, it has done exactly that. And it has sort of mirrored that corner. So if I put it back into place, you can see that we've got what looks like a page flip. But I'm not going to finish there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Edit. I'm going to transform and I'm going to use warp. Now when I hit warp, we can see that Photoshop has generated a series of editable nodes that we can use to manipulate the shape of this object. So I'm just going to start to tweak some of these nodes. And what I want to do is I want to get an effect that looks a little bit more organic than what we had before. So I'm just going to edit these slightly and see what effect I can get. And once I'm done, I'm going to press enter. And that corner flap is looking just a tad too big. So again, I'm going to press command T to pull up my free transform. I'm just going to rotate it slightly. And the reason for that is when I press enter and I press command T again, you can see that I can alter the free transform, but I can do it a lot easier than I would have at the angle it was before. So I'm just going to slightly squash that flap and just rotate it back into position. 
using the arrow keys, I can put that back into position. And you can see that that's a nice looking flap. And once I'm happy with the flap, I'm going to come to my layers panel and select the posted note. And I'm going to come to edit, transform and warp. And I'm just going to slightly warp the page here just to give it a little variation there so it doesn't look so rigid as before. And next we are going to create the shadow underneath our post-it. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel and I'm going to come to the layer underneath the post-it and I'm just going to press Command Shift N to create a new layer. And first I'm going to move my post-it note and flap just up slightly so I can create myself some room so the colors don't get in the way. Come back to my layers panel and select the layer underneath the post-it note and I'm going to come and select the pen tool and what I'm going to do as you can see I'm going to just start clicking some nodes here just start placing some nodes you'll see what I'm about to do in a second and once I've completed the ring I'm going to come back to my menu, click and hold on the pen tool and I'm going to select the convert point tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add some curved data to these nodes here. There we go and start to add this there and I can click whoops, and, do, and move these nodes around and once I'm happy with my initial shape, I'm going to right click and select Make Selection. Click OK. I'm going to come over to my color picker. I'm going to select a black. Click OK. By pressing G, I can pull, pull up my paint bucket and fill that. Press Command D to deselect and press V. And as you can see, I've created a shadow shape underneath my poster. Just going to move that into place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a blur filter to this to give it a little bit more of an effect. So I'm going to come to filter, blur, and this time I'm going to choose radial blur. When I select radial blur, I'm going to go for something around 16. Let's click OK. And you can see the effect it's applied. I'm going to come to my opacity I'm going to change the opacity for now to about to about 30 or let's say 40%. There you go. And you can see that it's having a nice effect already. It's making the post-it note look as if it's lifting off the page. Now, there's there's certain things about the shadow I'm not happy with, so I'm going to get the eraser tool and I'm going to select a feathered brush. And I'm just going to delete a little bit of our shadow there just to make it look a little bit neater. So use the arrow keys to move that into place and there is our shadow. Now before I move on to the next stage and create our push pin I'm just going to finish off this post-it note. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel and select my post-it note layer. I'm going to double click on it I'm going to come over to my styles and click gradient overlay and by default it is set it to black to white and I'm going to come over to the gradient and I'm going to click once on the gradient color and you can see our properties window comes up and we'll have the option to choose from a range of predefined gradients but in this occasion I've got my predefined colors down here so I'm going to go ahead and click on the color stop and I should be able to select on the color down here, move my color picker down to my first color choice. OK. And again, with the next color, I'm going to select that color and select my next predefined color. OK. And that looks a lot nicer. And we're almost ready to move on to the next step. Before that, I'm just going to organize my layers. First of all, I'm going to double click on the flap layer and name it flap and double click on our paper note call it paper note and name my shadow layer shadow and by pressing and holding shift I can select multiple layers 
and by pressing Command G I can group these layers and by double clicking on the name I can name the group and I'm just going to call this paper note and there you go by clicking on the group I can move this around and have the freedom to move all the objects at the same time and I'm ready to create the push pin and this is where it gets really fiddly so to help me I'm going to come back to my previous version and I'm going to grab the push pin group and I'm going to drag it into my new composition and I'm just going to place it next to our post-it and I'm going to by pressing Z I'm going to pull up the zoom and I'm just going to zoom in nicely and we're going to create the pin from scratch but we're going to use this one here to the left as a reference so let's make a start first thing I'm going to do is press command shift N to create a new layer and I'm going to call this one base because this is going to be our base and I'm going to come to the marquee tool but click and hold and pull up the ellipse and I'm going to draw a circle I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to choose a red I'm going to choose a bright red okay and by pressing G I can pull up, pull up my paint bucket and I'm going to fill that shape and I'm going to press command D to deselect now I'm going to come over to my layer and double click and I'm going to come over to inner shadow and you can see that we can change the parameters here to the right so I'm going to tweak the distance and I'm going to tweak the angle and I want the angle coming in at about 90 degrees I'm just going to change the size and the opacity and once we're happy with that I'm going to click OK we can come back and we can edit all this later on the next thing I'm going to do is press command shift N I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this middle OK and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm going to select a rounded rectangular tool sometimes it might be set to rectangle tool but if you click and hold you can select rounded rectangular tool but before we draw our shape we want to come up to the top and look at our parameters and at the, at the moment radius is set to 10 pixels I want to change that to about 40 pixels and when I draw a shape you will see that it creates a rounded rectangle edge and that is going to prove good for us now when you look closely in the layers you will have to right click and rasterize layer in order to fully change and customize this shape so I'm going to move the shape slightly to the left so you can see what I'm about to do and I'm going to come to edit transform and perspective I'm just going to grab the top le top left and pull it into the right so we add a little bit of perspective so it looks like it's getting thinner as it goes to the top and press enter and if I press command T I can just push that down a little bit so we get a shape that looks a little bit like that and we can place that on top and again I'm going to come over to my layers panel and double click and again I'm going to come to inner shadow and if I come across to the distance choke and size I'm just going to push up the distance to around 12 I'm going to push the choke to around 4 and push the size to about push the size up ever so slightly I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 40 or 50 let's say 45 and keep the angle at 90 degrees and that should be that should do just fine for now and we can move around now you can see that by adding that in a shadow it's beginning to define the plas the red plastic there so we're ready to create the top piece now we're going to create a new layer command shift n and we're going to call this head 
base. Okay. I'm going to come over to our ellipse tool, ellipse marquee tool. We're going to draw a ellipse, move that into place. And I'm going to use the color picker tool. And I'm just going to select the red from the base. But this time, I'm going to come over to the color selection and just make it a tad darker. There you go. Okay. And by pressing G, I can grab my paint bucket tool and fill that area. By pressing Command D, I can deselect that. Pressing V to grab my selection tool so I can just move this around. And I'm just going to move that into place by fine tuning it with the arrow buttons. And again, I'm going to double click on this layer. And I'm going to again select in a shadow. And I'm going to push up the size. Distance. Let's choke. It's looking just fine. And I'm going to right click on the head base. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and just call it head. OK. I'm just going to zoom in. Press Command T. And just move this up a little. Oops. If I double click on that layer, I can reduce the opacity of that inner shadow. And if I come to color overlay, I can click and select the lighter red from earlier on. And if we look closely, now we can see that by having a lighter color on top and the darker color underneath, it gives that illusion of that thick little plastic piece at the top. And actually, to give this point a bit more emphasis, I'm going to come back to my head base. And I'm just going to go to Color Overlay. And I'm going to select a red. And I'm just going to make it even, even more darker so you can really see it. There you go. That's a lot better. Now we can see that that base underneath is looking a lot darker and has a more overall authentic appearance. Now, the next thing I'm going to create is the little pin. And we're going to create that by creating a new layer. Command Shift N. And let's call this pin point. OK. And I'm going to come over to my marquee tool. I'm going to click and hold and grab my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw a solid rectangular shape. And I'm going to come and fill that with, with a white color by pressing G to pull up my paint bucket tool. I'm just going to fill that. Command D to deselect. Now, as you can see, this layer is currently on the top of our base. And I'm going to put that behind it shortly. Before that, I'm going to come to Edit, Transform, Perspective. And I'm just going to grab the bottom left, just pull it in slightly. So we want to try and create a sort of pinpoint and I think that'll do for now press enter I can move that around let me come to my layers panel and here's my pinpoint layer I'm just going to click and hold that and drag it down underneath my base and I can reposition this to where I feel fit with the arrow keys now to give a little bit more of a better aesthetic to that pin I'm going to come over to my layers panel and double click on the pin I'm going to come to gradient overlay and like before it's brought up our default colors with the black to white and I'm just going to change the opacity to about I'm going to change toggle the opacity to about let's give it 50% it's going to change the angle slightly to change the angle let's go with about 80 that looks okay for now. Okay. And next I'm going to quickly create our two highlights there. Easily done. Come into the layers panel. We want to make sure that we're on top of the middle section. So I'm going to click on the middle layer. I'm going to create a new layer. Command Shift N. And let's call this Highlight 1. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool. And just draw out a tall, thin, selection area there. 
pressing G, I'm going to fill that white space. Command D to deselect. And I'm going to come to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm just going to toggle the Gaussian Blur a little till I'm happy with happy with it. Let's go for let's go for seven. Let's go for a seven. Click OK. And we can use the arrow keys just to move this around. And I'm going to change the opacity to about change the opacity to about 60%, so it's not too intense. And then I'm going to come to the middle section and I'm going to use the magic wand tool or W for shortcut just to select all the area outside the middle area and then click back on my highlight layer and just press delete and that will just get rid of all the white area on the outside that I don't want. Command D to deselect. So there is my highlight one and I'm going to press command shift N to create a new layer and call this highlight two. I'm going to do the same thing but this time with the ellipse tool we're just going to draw ourselves a little ellipse there press G to pull up my paint bucket and I'm going to fill that with a white command D to deselect let's move that into position and let's just come to filter blur Gaussian blur and that looks pretty good to me okay and we can move that into position. And there is our and there is our pin. Let's zoom out and take a look at that. There, there is our pin. Now lastly, to finish this off, I'm going to come over to my layers panel. I'm going to select on the top layer, which is the head. And by holding shift, I'm going to select on pin point, which is the bottom layer. That will select all of them. And I'm going to press command G and that is going to group all those layers together and by double clicking on the layer or the group rather I can call this push pin and I no longer need our reference image and get rid of that now I want to create the shadow for this push pin and I want to show you a nifty little trick because to create the shadow we're going to need a shape identical to our push pin here. Now we have just grouped our push pin. Now if I am to right click on the group and duplicate group, click OK, we will literally duplicate the group and all the contents inside it. But we don't need to duplicate that group and especially all the contents inside it. We just want the shape. So with that duplicated group, I can press Command E. And what that will do is that will flatten the whole group into a single layer. And that's going to be really convenient because what we can do now is double click on this layer and come to color overlay and we can simply select a black. So I'm going to move the shadow into place. Currently it's on top of the push pin group, but that doesn't matter right now. I'm going to press command T I'm going to, to, to pull up free transform. I'm just going to rotate the pin around and I'm going to place it where I think the shadow might just be cast off that pin there. Okay. N then the next thing I'm going to do is come to filter, blur, radial blur. And I'm going to use the same technique I used earlier on in the tutorial to create the blur for the post-it note there and we used the value of 16 previously so let's see how it looks using that value not too bad that's not too bad if we come over to opacity and change that to a good 30 percent I think we can get away with that if you're by the way if you're not entirely happy with that value you can you can undo that and and, and play with that yourself and try and get something you're happy with but I think I'm happy with that and next thing I'm going to come to my layers and just drag the push pin into my well my push pin shadow and drag it into my push pin folder and what you'll find is every time you drag a layer into a folder it will automatically drag it to the bottom so here is my shadow there I'm just going to double click and call that shadow so I am organized.
And there is our post-it note and push pin. All that's left is to create the background and put our text on top. So let's go with the background. I'm going to click here on a cork board image. And I got this off a royalty-free website. The link is in the description, so you can go ahead and grab that. I'm going to press Command A to select all, Command C to copy, and then come back to my composition here. And I'm going to select the bottom layer, which happens to be the colors. But I'm going to paste on top of that. So I'm going to press Command V. And all of a sudden, there is our cork board. And it, now it's looking a lot better now, isn't it? It's looking a lot more interesting with our cork board. So I'm going to press Command U. And I'm going to alter the hue saturation slightly because to me that's looking a bit orange and I just want to bring it down a little bit. That's cool. There you go. Pull down the hue saturation. OK. And then I'm going to come to that layer and right click and hit duplicate layer. OK. Then I'm going to come up in our layers panel to the top and we're going to see our layer blending modes. And I'm going to select the drop down and I'm going to hit multiply. And you can see the effect of that. It's immediately made it all darker. But I don't want the whole image to be as dark as that. I just want some of it to be dark. I want to go for a nice shadow effect, a blend effect. So with that layer selected, I'm going to come to the bottom of my layers panel. And you will see, third from the left, there'll be a button called Add Layer Mask. When we click that, we'll notice that there'll be a white square that appears to the right of our image. This is where we will create our layer mask. And we need to make sure that when we apply our layer mask or create our layer mask, we need to have this box selected. So with this box selected, I'm going to come over to my menu and make sure that I've got the black and white colors here. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to click and hold on the paint bucket tool and pull up my gradient. And then I'm going to move my mouse cursor to the top right, click and hold, and drag it to the bottom left and release. And then you'll see the effect. Now we have a nice dark to light fade effect that looks a lot more interesting. Finally, we're going to create our text layer. But before that, I'm going to quickly come to my layers panel, select the top background layer, holding shift, select the bottom and press command G. I'm going to group them, double click on the layer and call that background. OK, then I'm going to click on the push pin, which is the top group. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm about to create a new layer and I just want it to be on the top. And I'm going to press T and that's going to pull up my type tool. I'm just going to click once and I'm going to type this is and with a capital T. And by default, it's set to white and it's at the size of 274. I'm just going to press Command D, Enter, to deselect text, and then press V. I'm going to move this around a little bit. By pressing Command T, I can toggle the scale of this and just move it into place. By the way, this font is available to download for free on the internet, so check out the links. So when I'm happy with that, I'm going to select, press Enter. Again, press T and select the text and press Command A to select it all. And I'm going to color this in a dark green font. OK. And again, Command D, Enter to deselect that text. I'm going to press V to pull up my selection tool so I can move it around. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is press, press and hold Alt on my keyboard and just click and drag and that will make it very easy to quickly duplicate this layer. Press T to pull up my tag tool and click on the text and I'm going to edit this. Press delete on the keyboard and this is urgent. This is urgent. And that's looking a bit big, so I'm just going to come over to my Layers panel, and by pressing Shift, I can select the layer below it, so I can move these around. Press Command T, and with them both selected, I will be able to change and toggle the scale of these together. Press Enter, 
can move this into place. And that is our composition almost complete. To finish it off, I might just touch up these or address these shadows here. If I come into the push pin, I might want to change the shadow, change the opacity. It's looking a bit dark there. Something a little bit lighter will do. And if we come into our paper note, I might just push up the opacity of the shadow so we can see that there has a bit more prominence, stands out a bit more. And there it is. There is our finished composition. That is how you create a post-it note with a push pin from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel now. There will be lots more vids like this coming soon. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytutes.com. You can see more videos just like this there. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter, where I'll be talking about various creative topics. Hope to see you there. So, have fun guys, and I will see you next time.